Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric and Matt, and this is Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit, your beacon of freedom and the American way of life. Tune in every Friday for a new episode as we dive into the world of liberty and what makes our country great. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Eric and Matt here with Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit, and I hope everyone has had a wonderful week. And today we're going to be getting into this podcast and we're going to be getting into the subject of road guns. Now, this is something that wound up being a little bit of a point of contention with many. Uh, I posted a tweet. Let me read the tweet. All right. The tweet says very quickly here. Let me see if I can get down to it. I said it's imperative to keep a long gun in your vehicle at all times. All right, I posted that, likes, and I also I got, got a lot of dang comments. I'm going to read a few of your comments and respond to them here uh, in this particular podcast. Um, before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Ballistic Inc. for supporting today's podcast. If you are looking for the most amazing t-shirts, hats, hoodies, shirts, all types of merch, they are definitely your go-to people. I love their designs. Now, I am a little bit biased because, you know, we do partner with Ballistic Inc., and obviously, Matt... You are you own Ballistic Inc., yes. but a big thanks to Ballistic Inc. for supporting our efforts and supporting all of our favorite content creators on everything that they're doing with their merch, t-shirts, hats, all that sort of stuff. You can support your favorite content creators. Go to BallisticInc.com, buy yourself a snazzy new t-shirt, and make a statement at the same time. That's right. America How's made. things been going this week, dude? Dude, you know, as always, busy. Um, Ballistic Inc., you know, keeps us busy. We have a couple of other ventures. The Jiu-Jitsu Academy keeps me busy as well. Um, You're leaving early today to go teach. Yes, man. We have some classes we have to teach over there as well. Um, you know, I'm not sure if I want to put out to the ether, like, where this place is at, because next thing you know, we're going to get bombarded with a whole bunch of people. Not quite ready to go. Yeah, that, yeah. let's <laughs> let's get some stuff uh, in line first before that happens, because it's... You know, we we run into people all the time in, in public, and they they recognize Eric. Then I've been recognized, and they come up and they chat us up. I just don't think I'm ready to like and like just put it out there and have people just walk in and I'm just like, uh, oh, it's a little bit. It, it can be a little bit weird sometimes. Well, when we when when that time comes, we'll have to come up and do an episode and uh, show off the place. Oh, absolutely! Looking man. forward to that. Yeah, I haven't I, been up there yet, but I want to check uh, it out. I, I heard that you're gonna start training and you're gonna like actually get into it and start uh, and start doing some jujitsu. And you know, we're gonna be there to to make sure it's done right. Well, I have been working out on a regular basis again. Uh, I'm trying to get back into that. I'm trying to get into better physical condition, and I've been doing the exercise bike quite a bit, and I've been enjoying that. Each morning, I'll put on like a concert. You know, I like watching concerts on yeah. YouTube, and I'll pull up. I think the other day I pulled up Jimi Hendrix concert, and then I and then the, another one I pulled up was uh, uh, one of the old G3 concerts with uh, Steve Vai, Eric Johnson. Mm -hmm. You know, those guys. It was pretty freaking cool. Um, but anyway, without and Joe Satriani was in that concert. But I, I'll put on a concert and ride the exercise bike for like an hour in the morning. Old school man, I like. Yeah, it. you know, have fun with it. Um, and I'm trying to increase the intensity and all and, and all, but I'm, I'm happy to hear that that's going well for you. So let's get on to this subject a little bit. So sometime back, um, Matt, you and I did an episode on road readiness. Yes. That one's been about a year ago. Yes, yes. And uh, that was more of a holistic approach to things you need to kind of have on you when you're on the road. And if you, you guys haven't tuned into that podcast, I suggest checking it out. Uh, because we go into a lot of detail on all sorts of things that you definitely want to uh, keep in your vehicle at all times. Yep. It was really kind of focused on more than just firearms. It was like medical, um, you know, like you said, things that you need to keep in there for survival, whether it's water flares, you know, food, um, there were obviously firearms there, but I don't think it went into the, that was just one portion of the show of that episode, the segment. I think today is really going to focus more on the meat and potatoes of what the IV88 channel is all about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, getting back to this tweet and, and some of the, the, the things that people are saying. All right, it's imperative to keep a long gun in your vehicle at all times. That was the statement. And I didn't really give a lot of context. I just kind of put that out there. You know, 1,500 likes, 33 quote tweets, Several retweets, not bad, and a lot of comments. So that's why I wanted to tune in on this one because there was there was like 185 comments, which for my Twitter page is kind of a lot of comments. Let's read through some of them and see 
um, what people have to say about carrying a long gun in your vehicle. So I am a believer in having a long gun in your vehicle. Now we are going to get into some of these uh, questions and comments that people had and kind of respond to some of them. Um, but I think it's important. You know, a pistol is used to fight your way to a rifle. A rifle is used to fight your way to safety and to remove yourself from the threat or to end the threat as you see it. Agreed. And when you're out on the road, you're away from home. You don't have the ability to just run in the house and grab a long gun. You don't have the ability to have all your favorite hiding places or to know that you have your, the sanctity of your home for protection, a place to escape to, a safe room, whatever it may be. It could be any, you know, your body armor, your kit, whatever. When you're on the road, you're always in this sort of reduced capacity of security, right? That's just the nature of it. I mean, if your vehicle is an extension of your home, then by proxy, your vehicle is a tiny home. So you think, what what can you put in your vehicle? Well, you can't bring everything from home. You're not going to have the espresso maker, you know, every right. little bell and whistle. So your car has to have this stripped down ability of the same thing you would have in your home. And that's the way I've always treated my car. My car needs to be like a little battle station that I can use as a staging area um, if I need to protect myself with something more than a, than a Glock or something, right? So, I mean, look, the world is getting scarier. Matt and I decided to kind of revisit this particular podcast in this way because over the last year, crime has kind of gotten a little bit silly, and you're seeing that there are a lot of situations where criminals are getting much more bold. There's a lot more carjackings. Um, there's a lot more um, going on in the large cities with crime, uh, particularly violent crime. Mm -hmm. you got to be able to respond to violence with violence. Uh, you've got to be ready to do it. Uh, but also, I think, to mirror what some of these comments that we're going to read through, Matt, um, have to do with, um, people are concerned. Oh, well, if I have a long gun in my car, what if someone steals it? What if someone breaks the window? You know, there's all these questions that people have going through their head. Or they go, hey, I live in the middle of a huge city, a busy city, and the last thing I would want is for someone to break into my vehicle, steal a long gun, and now I'm culpable for the loss of that long gun. And those are perfectly reasonable uh, uh, concerns that I think we can get into. Yes. And, you know, I think if anything taught us that you want a long gun, it was, you know, what happened at Uvalde. Um, you know, you just never know. And it's not nice. It's like you said, you're, the, the handgun is great. It, I compare that to a hasty fighting position, like hasty. It's there. It's a hasty fighting position. That is not a permanent fighting position. It just gets the job done until you can get a more dug in position. Same thing with the handgun. Handgun is great for certain situations, but if you're going into something or you're trying to get home, you definitely want a long gun. Yeah. It's going to get the job done. Now, there's a lot of different things that we can put into this context, Matt, with long gun. Now, when I think long gun in a car, I think like an AR or an AK or something that shoots a, a full power rifle cartridge of some, some sort, right? Um, a few of the people here in the comments, which we're going to get into in a moment, were mentioning like some survival rifles and things, and we'll yep. get into that. But the point is, um, you could also do like perfect pairs. Chad and I have done multiple videos before where we discuss perfect pairs, and that would be something like, say, you have a Glock 19 and then a PCC that accepts a Glock magazine that maybe extends the capability of your, your shooting capabilities a bit. Like, you may not be able to shoot a, tar a target 150, 200 yards away with your pistol, um, very reliably, like offhand in a stressful moment, but with a PCC, maybe you can. It does so, become significantly easier. Oh, yes. Significantly Under stress, easier. the better you can control the gun, the, you know, the better yep. off you'll be. So, hey, what's, what's the harm in having some more controllability with the gun? So some people don't like PCCs. I know some folks are not big fans of them. I absolutely hate PCCs. Right. And, <laughs> and, and I get it. So it's like if you're going to have a gun that weighs as much as an AR, then why not have an AR with a full power rifle cartridge? Yes. And I agree. I have I've slowly but surely gotten back into mm -hmm. the mindset of, well, why would I have a seven pound PCC when I can have a six and a half pound, seven pound AR? Or take it, it, take it, you know, one step further and say, well, what if we do like an intermediate uh, cartridge like a, or a weapons of like the descent, or you have like a bottle, a, a pistol, a bottleneck pistol round. So you're getting the velocity to punch through that soft armor it's not definitely not going through any hard armor, but it's not a PCC. And it's certainly not 
a Glock with a three inch barrel exactly. that you're, you're sitting there trying to drill holes at exactly. 75 yards if you have to. Yeah. Now that's where I do have, I am a fan of those, those particular weapons. I don't consider those PCCs. I consider those uh PDWs. Like this wonderful POF that we have. Oh, I mean, now, yes. now you're talking, that's the ultimate. I mean, this is a full yes. auto POF 416 sitting in front of us. Uh, We're which so lucky. Was not, was not, <laughs> what's not to like there. Let's go through some comments, Matt. Um, you can see what I'm seeing here. Um, yep. Feel free to jump in. Yeah, so the first one that pops out to me is uh, Rhea Jerome from, in New Jersey. You can keep one unloaded with just a firearm purchaser card. One prominent Tui lawyer said that it was possible to keep a PCC such as the kel Sub-2000 in a briefcase unloaded. So I know New Jersey has some pretty abhorrent and strict firearms laws honestly i probably wouldn't even test that i mean we had the story of the the uh mom that happened to cross over that one little sliver of new jersey and they're trying to throw her in jail and prison time because she happened to get uh pulled over in the small portion of New Jersey while she was just trying to get back into New York. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really, really tough guys because we speak about, like we live in Georgia. We are lucky. I'm going to say that in a sense that we have pretty, um, we have a very good latitude on what we can and can't do in our vehicles. And we just got constitutional carry. We got constitutional carry. carry, but Georgia is one of the few states that, like Eric mentioned before, considers your car as your home. So anything that you can carry in your home, you can carry in your car um, that's considered your domicile. Um, that's not the case in other states. So when you hear Eric and I talk, yes, it is from the point of view that we're from Georgia, um, but a lot of the stuff does pertain to other to, to other states that are local to us. Yeah, and that's a great point. You know, so every state has their own kind of you know odd laws and, yeah. and rules that might diligence. apply to where and where you cannot carry how how you can and cannot carry uh, a gun in your vehicle. Um, it is interesting the amount of, of comments we got. I do want to read through a few. So revisionist historian says, I purposely built a cheap truck gun that runs reliably so I could mount it under the back seat of my truck. If someone steals it, I'm not out much. Having enough firepower to fight my way home if I need to is worth the risk to me. So the the thing that people kind of keep going back to is... I mean, like here, um, Subdermal13 says, what about the point that most black market firearms are stolen often out of vehicles? All right, that is an excellent point of contention that certainly needs to be addressed, right? Yes. Um, Like my truck has a lockbox. Now, um, it's not a super rugged lockbox, but it is a locked area that I can put the gun in. Unless someone knows where where it is, like it is kind of hidden Mm -hmm. uh, and everything like that, so someone would have to go through a great deal of effort to break into it. And they'd have to have a lot of time. And I would certainly hope that the alarm system on my vehicle would, um, you know, it it has glass break sensors. I have an alarm system. Now, I know not every vehicle has an alarm system. I think it goes without saying, don't store your crap in full view. Don't just leave a freaking long gun in the back of your truck in full view. You know what I mean? Like, hide it, put it in a locked storage box. I mean, there's lots of options. There's there's um, lockable racks that you can put on the back of your seat. Um, you know, the Gray Man tactical type stuff. I mean, there's so many different products out there that are set up in that way, right? There's lots of ways to hide a long gun, all right? And a great point about the Sub-2000, they do fold up nice and compact. You could always put one in a laptop case or a small bag and have that bag on standby. You could even, like, you know padlock it. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to secure your firearms and make them very difficult to get out, but you still need to have them accessible. I mean, that's kind of the point. They need to be ready in case there's an emergency. You need to protect yourself. Um, Survivalist, that uncle at Thanksgiving dinner says, what scenario are you preparing for? I think the more appropriate question is, what am I not prepared for? Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's like uh, a backhanded comment. It's almost like what are you preparing for that you would need all of that and like need all of what it, I would much rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And what I will tell you is 
I store mine out of sight. So it is, in my, I drive an SUV. So my spare tire is inside of my vehicle. So if you open the back trunk, there's a false floor. So you have the false floor that you pull up and it has the, the spare tire in there. Well, it just so happens that a fully collapsed stock on a 16 inch M4 will fit perfectly. Boom, right across the edge. You put that false floor back on top and it looks like nothing is there. Take it one step further and there's tie down hooks. There's like actually like four D rings that pop up that for tie downs. You can just put a piece of steel braided cable across that. So even if someone breaks into your car, there's no way for them to pull that false floor up. They're not gonna they're not gonna mess around with that. So you don't necessarily need a gun safe that you would see that advertised, but a little ingenuity can act as this the the safety protocol on that. You know, it it's interesting that there was a book put out not too long ago, and I, I really feel terrible for not remembering the exact name and author of the book, but it was a guy who had survived like some civil war in I want to say it was all the stuff that was going on in Yugoslavia. Remember when that there was that whole breakup in Yugoslavia yep, yep. and that like kind of civil war that was going on? And this guy survived this this thing and wound up kind of having some memoirs, if you will, about you know what he did to survive and and you know the people that came out on top the most in those situations were the ones that were just kind of hidden in plain sight. You know, someone who had a house barricaded really crazily and everything. You know looters and rioters or or just enemy combatants would be like oh there must be something valuable in there but this guy literally just held up in like this little kind of farmhouse thing that just looked nonchalant like nobody would ever want to be there and people didn't associate the value with it Mm -hmm. so that kind of plays into this next comment i want to read uh from ciro kiva one i probably butchered that but anyway he said we don't leave guns in cars that's how they get stolen especially if you have pro-gun stickers all over it He's right. Yep. I mean, if you announce to the whole world, hey, I'm pro-gun, I've got NRA and gun stickers all over my vehicle, and I've got mm-hmm. the don't tread on me, gas and flag, and come take it, and all this stuff. All right, if someone's walking through a parking lot, and they look through a pool of 20 cars, and they see the one with the gun stickers on it, which one are they going to probably break into? The one with the freaking yeah, gun stickers the one with the on gun it. stickers. If they're wanting to steal a gun, they can assume that there's someone probably has a gun in that vehicle. Don't advertise that you have guns in your freaking vehicle, yep. right? Be as gray and as simple as you can about it. Like, be nonchalant. Be be sneaky about it. Like, you're not advertising the world you have it. Hide it in a, in a suitcase. Hide it in a laptop bag. Hide it in a book bag. Put it in a lockable, uh, you know, seat thing or like what you talked about. I mean, there's lots mm-hmm. of things. And there's also professional storage options you can get, like those truck bed lock boxes. A lot of people those have those great. rollover yeah. tawny covers or those hard tawny covers with the lock box in there. You ain't getting in that thing unless you got a lot of dang time. And that's the thing that defeats most criminals is time. So anything can be broken into with given enough time, but they're in a hurry. They're trying to break a window. They're trying to get what is readily available. And if it's not accessible easily, they move on. That's right. So this comment here, I want to acknowledge because this is the third, actually fourth comment. And we're not even that far down the page where people have mentioned the Caltech sub 2000, uh, spicy carrot said vehicle, is the one and only place a sub-2000 with the M-Carbo kit makes sense, especially if your carry uses the same magazines. Perfect pairs. I do not work for kel but I know their dealer. <laughs> okay. But that is yet another instance where someone mentions a sub-2000. Sub-2000 is like a four or $500 gun. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I would not want a gun to get stolen, but if it did get stolen, at least you're out only 500 bucks. Not that you should put yourself in a situation to have a gun get stolen. But the point remains, how many people keep mentioning the sub-2000? It folds up. And I want to share another little interesting story that I think people need to hear. Now, I'm not going to mention who this is. Um, Let's just say it was a friend of mine. They were, this happened to a friend of mine. They were at a, they were at a bar having a few drinks. I'm not going to say where, but while they were inside having a few drinks, someone broke into their vehicle and there were not guns visible, but Someone broke in the vehicle, okay? They took an AR and a pistol, 
but they left the Sub 2000. The Sub 2000 was just under the seat. I wouldn't say in plain view, but here's the thing. When a Sub 2000's folded, unless you're a gun person, you're not going to know what it is. Right. It doesn't look like a gun when it's folded. And your average criminal, they're not going to associate it with a gun. They left the Sub 2000. It was in. It was the most in plain view out of all the... The other guns were really well hidden. But if you pull back you know, a bunch of sheets or covers or a case or look up under something, you see an AR, you know it's an AR when you see it. You see a pistol, you know a pistol's a pistol. But it's interesting that... Those two guns got stolen, but not the Sub-2000. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting. You know what I see? And how many people have been mentioning the Sub-2000? I see a bunch of people that bought Sub-2000s that are just trying to justify their purchase. Because okay. normally that's not something that you would brag about. Well, but look, okay. people can say what they want about <laughs> Sub-2000s, but I mean, I like them. I They're mean, definitely neat guns. They, they are neat. And look, you're not going to shoot a long way with them, you know. My sub 2000, I can hit a 12 inch gong at 100 yards. That's all I need to be able to do. It's kind of nice to have a little bit more range than a pistol, mm-hmm. have something that gives you a little bit of extra firepower. Also, another point of contention with um, long guns in your vehicle is that, say, I always have my pistol on me and then I have a PCC that is set up in the same mags that, that my sidearm uses. Well, if my wife, for instance, wasn't carrying a gun or maybe I had someone with me that wasn't carrying a gun, I can now arm that person. And now it's a force mm-hmm. multiplier to be able to hand a gun out that uses the same mags. All I have to do is grab my belt, whatever, if I've got a battle belt. I mean, so there is a point where you could say that having a sub-2000 as a force multiplier is probably not a bad thing. I mean, does it offer much more firepower than my handgun? Mm, one would argue. Um, but interesting. But like you said, interesting uh, point. you know, it does add more distance it adds more controllability better recoil impulse i'm not opposed to it i just think that there's better options for the same footprint so if you're taking up the same square footage whether it's one square foot you know in that in that same space there's better options oh yeah yeah Much i would better. rather have you know a freaking ar 110 yep. percent, a mark 18 or a pof 416 yep. All day long, yeah. Give, give me, give me a ten and a half inch, twelve and a half inch AR. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. An absolute nightmare scenario is you being in a gunfight with you having a handgun and them having a, a rifle or a carbine. Like that is probably the yeah. worst position you can ever be in. So that UFO guy says, "What type of safe are you keeping in your vehicle at all times, or are you driving a Brinks truck?" This guy said, definitely on long trips. Uh, the, Dave the Cat says, definitely on long trips, but otherwise it becomes a visibility slash security issue for me. Chain Armor says, curious as to your reasons. I agree with you on lots of points, but not necessarily this one. Big potential for liability. Um, uh, Libertarian's Rule says, I always have a handgun on me. Would love to carry a weapon in my car, but just not feasible or safe to do so. Um, I like Dylan's. So, I like Dylan's. He says, I wish I was around in the days when that was, quote, normal. normal. Yeah, yeah. And Dylan, it's still normal. Right. I roll around with level four plates, six magazines on a placket, AR in the false floor, and people open my trunk all the time to load stuff in there, and they take a look at that vest, and they go, ah, cool. That's it. Like, people don't care. I think the only person that cares would be you. You're maybe you have a little bit more self conscious about you know what they're gonna think of you. But if if you don't care, people don't care. I can understand where some of these people are coming from because mm-hmm. there seems to be like in, in the comment section. Look, to be fair, I'm trying to I'm trying to understand where these, these folks are coming from. They get it. Like they maybe are worried that someone's gonna break in their vehicle and take it, and that's a very real concern. You don't want you know, a firearm that you've worked hard to pay for and it's your, your property. You don't Absolutely. want someone to break in your vehicle and steal your property. It doesn't matter if it's a laptop case yeah. or, or a gun or anything. You don't want someone taking your stuff. I mean, that's just, it's natural for us to feel that way. So I think it's important to have an alarm system on your vehicle. For sure. You know, yeah. I know some older vehicles aren't set up that way. And to make it worse, some older vehicles are a lot easier to break into without actually having to break it. Like you can, you can, you know, slim Jim the, the, the doors pretty easily and quietly. So I think whenever you go somewhere, 
it's imperative to freaking just make sure you're parking somewhere secure. Like if there's good bright lights in an area, kind of back in. That's what I like to do. You know, I also like to like get in real close where it's hard to open the doors to. That's always that, a good one. If you back if you back in and like a parking deck, but you back in like to where your bumpers almost touching the wall then there's no way they're going to be able right. to get into the back. I, I always try to find pillars to yeah. back into. Yep. So there's a lot of things you can do to sort of position yourself um, strategically, you know, near cameras, near lights. Maybe there's a secur- security guard shack or something like this. So there, there's lots of things like that that you can be a little more careful about. But at the end of the day, I guess to sort of acknowledge what some of you are getting at when it comes to this, um, you know, the indifference people have about carrying a long gun in the car... Mm-hmm is that at the end of the day, it's going to be a risk that you have to either accept or or deny. And, and that's what it comes down to is that, so if we read Deplorable AF, he says, always carry a pistol on me, good, either a 9mm or compact 45, and keep an AK SBR, ah, overkill, in a soft case under the back seat of my truck. Never had a break in or even attempt but the truck has a higher end aftermarket alarm system plus a pretty high lift that's also a deterrent. Yep. I know um layers of security. Trunk uh trucks are unique in that the back seats do offer a little bit more concealment um than what you would find in like a regular SUV or a car because they're designed by nature to fold and like really you can use it as a concealment method by putting it on top of something, um, folding it up and putting something in between the seats and then folding it up so you can't see it. Um, but I think that's the, I mean, AKSBR is uh, that's pretty Gucci to, to have for your, for your truck gun. But I mean, I think that's cool. And uh, everything that he has is a deterrent, like high truck. Yeah, okay, that means you're exposed. You open the doors. You have to get up into the truck. You're nobody wants to be exposed like that. So. Yep. And um, I I think trucks are definitely. I mean, there's a lot more options for securing a long gun in a truck than probably yep. any other type of vehicle. One, you have a little bit of additional space in the back seat. Um, two, there's just simply more options out there. The lock boxes, some of them are like the lock boxes that go in the bed of your truck. Mm-hmm. I've seen people hide guns in work trucks on the lockable containers, which that's a little sketchy. Oh, yeah, like the ones on the outside of the... Yeah, well, they but have like then the it's outside on? the vehicle. So yeah. it's like if someone could break that lock, but then again, if there's seven or eight lockable containers, how do they know which one yeah. has a long gun in it? They Unless also, they've got time to sit there and break into all of them. And then they have those ones that go in the, tr- the bed of the truck that lay across the back that have the lock box. I probably too. would not keep a long gun in a lock yep. box. I would keep it inside the vehicle, especially if you've got mm-hmm. an alarm system. That's really the big, big takeaway. If you don't have a good alarm system on your vehicle, I'd probably reconsider, you know, keeping a long gun in your vehicle. And also I want to provide a little bit of context to my reasoning for long guns too, is that I also live out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. So for me, like I'm kind of in a rural area, you know, I'm going to town doing whatever I'm doing. I come home, the long gun comes out with me and back in the house. Like, it goes where I go. And I guess that was kind of the context of of which I was trying to make people understand. It's like, wherever I go, a long gun is near me, right? So I'm not suggesting leave it in there all the time, where maybe you live in a big city and someone at any time could potentially break in your vehicle and take it. Take it with you, right? When you go back in, whether it's in a case a concealable backpack if you're in the middle of a large city yeah maybe have a foldable ar and a little backpack you take your backpack sling it over your shoulder you go about your business when you get back in your vehicle you bring it back with you wherever you go the gun goes and look i'm even that way when i'm out i'm out places like if i go somewhere for instance and i'm just i don't know going to eat or whatever yeah if i have that foldable AR in my backpack, a little shorty or something like my eight inch. I n- normally don't carry the eight inch cause it's super tiny, but like if I have a, a Mark 18 with a folding stock or something mm-hmm. and I have a small backpack, yeah, I'm going to stuff it in the backpack and I'm going to grab my backpack. And I'm going to go about my business. I'm going to go eat or whatever. And, and, and no one's the wiser. No one knows I have it. And it's on me and it's ready at all times in case I need it. Well, right. And no one can take it because I have it. So possession is, is the big cornerstone of this. Like, take it where you go. If there's the ability to take it with you where you go, take it freaking with you. In, in a, you know, if it's something compact that you can hide and looks average and blends in, carry it with you. Well, I'm just going to 
It's what I do. I'm going to shout out uh, Stern Defense because I think they just, they had that, I mean, it's very rare that you see something that is that cool and I'm not going to say the word revolutionary, but you would think that someone would have come up with it before until you see it. But they have that folding stock adapter that allows you to, um, because the issue with folding stocks was always like the buffer. Like, what do you do with the with the buffer spring and the buffer tube and all that good stuff without, there's just a lot of logistics involved in that. But um, Stern Defense has that cool f- uh, folding stock adapter, which allows that all to remain in place. And then you close it back up and it allows you to run a traditional AR with a folded stock in a very small configuration. Um, it was it was pretty cool, man. I, I liked it. And if you're going to run um, like an off-body long gun in a backpack, I would probably check that out because yeah. very few companies are, are doing what they're doing as far as like concealability. Yep. That's cool. I, I think it's really smart what they're doing with that quick detach buffer system. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is a great design. And we haven't done a full video on that just yet. I, I do plan on on doing a little bit more work with it. I, I At our range day, I was able mm-hmm. to check it out. And that was actually like the first production model past the prototype that I got to see. And uh, I did get to shoot it. And uh, it works well. And everything that Stern does is solid. I mean, their their work is great. And big shout out to them. Yeah. Well, the late, that is very rare. I only say that because it stuck out to me because the, the ladies that run that, I believe they're sisters, they're super passionate. Like when you talk to them, like they, they get it. Like they're they're into it. So here, Eric Rahm, uh, this is just kind of backing up what I just said. I always had a pistol with a folding brace and a backpack that I took in and out of the house with me when I lived in the suburbs. Also had a concealed carry handgun. This guy says, highly illegal here in New Jersey. And that's uh, Rooftop Mick. Um, Glenn Norman says, pretty difficult when you drive a pickup. No good place to hide so someone doesn't break in and steal it. So again, we just talked about that. Again, people are so concerned about someone breaking in. And and that's a legitimate concern. I mean, I Mm -hmm. I, I would guess that what I would probably sort of add to that argument to sort of ease their mind or, or maybe just maybe there's something they didn't think about. Right. Is that, you know, where you're going. Right. Like, think about it. You know if you're in the part of town where you got to worry about it or if you're not. I mean, like, you know where crimes occur in your city. You should know. You should know that five blocks in that direction, there's a ton of break-ins all the time. Or you should know that cars get broken into in front of your house if that's where you live in the suburbs in the city or something. Yeah, like I mean, don't you- leave your property laying around where someone can steal it. We're not saying yeah. that. But just keep your wits about you. Like, know where you're going. So, you know, for real though, if you have like, if you live in a city where are you, let's say you rent or you own in a city where you have street parking, don't leave your stuff in the car. If you have a house where you have your own garage or you have a detached garage, yeah, you're fine. No one's going to break into your garage and then break into your car. Like they're going to, that just doesn't Too many layers. Yeah, it doesn't happen. So you just have to be smart about it. Um, But this one right here, app X root. What do you recommend for storing the long gun safely in the vehicle? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so with like you mentioned with trucks, <clears throat> excuse me, they have a ton of options. And it's interesting that the guy before that says there are no options for a pickup truck. There's a ton. There's I, a ton of options. Uh, for a, truck. a lot. Um, and I think it really just depends on if you have what what setup you have. Are you running like the classic, you know, two person like regular cab? Are you running a crew cab a king cab but you have a lot of options as far as like gray man tactical a lot of safes a lot of hard cases that the hard cases have a uh, steel braided tether that go around the the bottom of the seat now as far as regular cars go like just standard suv standard passenger vehicles two-door four-door um the glove box man the glove box locks okay people forget this you're not people come in and they try to open a glove box it's actually pretty difficult to open if you don't have like a crowbar so for some reason people always they think it's just where you put your driver's like registration you can lock that bad boy up all right and then most people are not going to sit there and mess around with it um then they have the uh the the i believe they call it the knox safes for the vehicles that again have the steel braided uh steel braided lines that wrap around the seat 
Um, again, and all this is just buying time. You're trying to make it as difficult and as long of a process that they're not going to mess around with it. Like, hey, I'm out of here. I broke the window. The alarm's going off. I'm getting out of here. If I can't snatch and grab it, um, your trunk, you can put it in your trunk. Your trunk locks as well. So a, a lot of and it's hard to break into a trunk. It's extremely difficult to break into a trunk. I mean, there's a reason they had to put little latches on the inside of the trunk for kidnap victims so they can open it from the inside. All right. Or if a child locks himself. In oh, there. is that what that's for? I, I, think, look it, I think it's a safety. <laughs> Why, why, are you, why is it always going to be about kidnapping know, people with, with me, you? It's like kidnapping. I'm what like, the oh, heck? I'm, I'm stuck in the trunk. I'm going <laughs> to. It's in case your kids thing. lock themselves know, in there. Okay. Well, it's for both. Maybe okay. your elder, elderly neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, you have a ton of options um, and they're not that expensive. I think last time I was in Costco, I saw those cars, the car firearm safes in Costco, like just stacked up on pallets and very fair price. And again, it doesn't have to be impenetrable. Not, it's not supposed to be impenetrable. It's just supposed to be a deterrent. I agree. So here's a couple of other points that I'd like to bring up here. Um, just I'm reading through the comments and stuff as we're talking. Again, uh, Billy the Butcher says, Ooh. not when you're in the city. In the city, one of the fastest ways to lose something is to keep it in your car. Right. I have to leave the windows open so people don't break in and search through my center console. Wow. So yeah, if you live in a place like that where, you know, you're leaving your windows down just to go, hey, there ain't nothing. I've seen internet memes where people will have a, a sign on their car that says, please don't break my windows. There's nothing in here worth stealing. Please don't do it because there's so many break-ins. So I can understand where people have a little bit of uh, apprehension about keeping something like a $1,000 AR or something in their vehicle. So um, I can certainly see where people are coming from. Interesting story about that. And people say, oh, people don't really do that. They do. And I'll tell you, I was... I don't live in the city, so maybe well, I'm a little biased. Well, here's the thing, Eric. I was uh, working for a company about 10 years ago. And we had a Habitat for Humanity build. So the company we have to, you know, we volunteer like every year and we were building a Habitat for Humanity house. And this house was in Hapeville, Georgia, which if you don't know is home to the original Chick-fil-A dwarf house. Um, so that was that's like the claim to fame for Hapeville. Um, and let's just say it is an inner city neighborhood. It's, uh, you know, lower income poverty and we were doing a habitat build there so we were building a house so if you can imagine we're in the middle of the a not so highly economic neighborhood with cars lined the street like we're lined up on the street because we had to drive there um decent cars you could say nice cars everybody there was lined up and i was like you know what i'm leaving my doors unlocked because something tells me if people from this neighborhood see all this, it's like a freaking buffet, man. So I left my doors unlocked. When we came back from that Habitat build, every single car there had a busted out window, except mine. They opened my doors because they always go for the door first. And guess what? They didn't have to bust my window. They just opened the door. I had nothing in the car. I, I knew where I was going. I emptied my car. They opened my door, went inside. They even closed the door for me when they left. But every single other car busted windows, broken windows. So it does actually work. So we're getting somewhere. Yes. And, and you know, uh, I'm not suggesting you leave your long gun in there with the window, uh, doors unlocked. Absolutely windows not. All right. Let's see. All right. Roy Anderson says that I keep a magazine fed shotgun with slugs in mind. All right. I'm glad he brought this up because I want to I want to talk about this a little bit. Because people have asked me, like, hey, would you carry a PCC, an AR, a shotgun? You know, not everybody likes shotguns, and I get that. I mean, like, not everyone's a shotgun person. And I would argue that, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not, but but I think in terms of shotguns that you actually have to be a very masterful gun handler to run a shotgun reliably and well. I mean, I shotguns require more time to reload, uh, much more strict manual of arms, you have to have better recoil control. Some would argue that the payload and distances you can shoot shotguns is a little bit limiting of a factor when you're trying, especially in a road gun category, where you mm -hmm. might want to be able to reach out to longer distance. I would agree. Um, however, look, I'm just going to say I carry a shotgun and a rifle. Because Dang, sometimes you need a shotgun right there. and sometimes you need a rifle. 
I just carry an AR. So right. I, ca- I carry my EDC pistol. I carry an AR and body armor. That's it. I'm a shotgun guy. I like payload. I like power. You know, what if you have to, I don't know, shoot a bear or a, a charging moose? I mean, look, I, I just, there's no moose down yeah. here where I live. But at the same time, it's like. But we also live in different parts of Georgia. So you live right. in the rural, in rural Georgia. I live in metro Atlanta. I don't live downtown, but I do live in, in the metro area. Um I love shotguns as well. I think they're a great tool. Um, they have a lot of different payload options. I'm not a huge fan of um, magazine-fed shotguns, uh, not for defensive purposes, just because a lot of stuff can go wrong with shotgun. They haven't r- shotgun magazines. They really haven't been refined. It's they they exist. They for me, it falls under like a novelty category. Um, but when you start getting into like the tube fed shotguns, if you're in a situation where you have to change magazines on a shotgun, you're in a really bad situation. I mean, those magazines are holding, you know, five magazines as a standard capacity for a shotgun magazine. And then their rounds are so large, they're so heavy. You can fit eight in a tube, one in the chamber with a ghost load on a Benelli. You got nine rounds, double up buck, nine round slugs. That's going to get you out of much I mean, trouble. If you can't solve the problem with that, you're in a really bad way. Like, I mean, all you have to do is look at all of the documented law enforcement shootings involving shotguns. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to, I can't show videos here on YouTube about it, but if you look up, there, there's plenty of videos out there. Just look up and you'll see that probably nine times out of 10, when a shotgun is deployed into a situation on the road with law enforcement and they have to put down, they shoot somebody or whatever, more times than not, they only fire one time. <laughs> it's a one-shot stop. Yep. And a lot of times they run buckshot. Yep. So imagine a slug. I mean, I carry the B- Berniki Black Magics. Uh, that's what they use up in Alaska for bear, you know, bears and things and dangerous animals. I mean, I want I want the best. Like I, I, I want basically a big game rifle. Well, let's let's talk at, about at that. At fifty for a yards, second. you're talking almost stopping rifle territory, like a big game rifle. And you know, if you need to end the threat, that's probably the best one shot stop there is. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's a great topic just to uh, extrapolate on uh, for a quick second. The misconception that you can't keep a tight shot pattern with double lot buck because I think people that don't use buckshot have uh, the mindset that it's going to just or the video game mindset that it just spreads immediately like it comes out of the barrel and it just opens up into this huge pattern and you're not going to hit anything past you know 50 feet you know but nothing could be farther from the truth i mean i think we were using the federal flight control out of the uh benelli m4 and man that thing was just I mean, it was keeping a super tight pattern all the way out to like 50, man. It was just, it was punching these targets. I was like, holy crap. I have to say that flight control wad is a great piece of technology. And uh, Federal has one heck of a load with that. Um, I like the Remington Sluggers as well for Mm -hmm. slugs. If I can't get Bernikis, I mean, the Remingtons are nice. Those one-ounce sluggers yeah. always pack I a mean, good punch. Slugs are great to like get out of when you're getting that distance, you know, 75, maybe 100. But don't sleep on the double-lot buck, man. I mean, you can, you can still do some very controlled shots with that. Now, I'm not going to read all these comments, but there's a lot of comments where people are saying, you know, hey, how can we realistically secure it? Again, sort of just reiterating what a lot of people's concerns are about secure storage. Maybe we can put a link to some options yeah, that we, we found. Will. Yeah, we will. And then also, a lot of people are saying, don't put stickers all over your vehicle. And there's been several mm-hmm. um, instances here where people are sharing that meme that says, that, you know, come and take it. And then the back glasses <laughs> broke out. <laughs> so I understand, you know, um, where, where people are coming from. Uh, Danny the man says that trunk monkeys would make the world a better place. You guys may not remember the old tr- yeah, trunk have to monkey the, commercial. Yeah. The guy pushes a button. You know, there's a guy outside arguing with him, raising hell. He pushes the the trunk monkey button. The monkey gets out with a tire and iron, hits the guy. Yeah, that's funny. It's a see, and this is where you kind of get like, you'll never see those types of like 
funny commercials or, or funny skits because they that that type of uh i guess political correctness is gone yep so i'm just looking through some of these comments because i want to um see here i mean yeah literally found this in our parking lot and it's it's a picture of a come and take it sticker with broken glass all over it where somebody broke into someone's vehicle so guys don't put gun stickers all over your freaking vehicle i know it's cool to do if you are going to do it don't leave freaking guns in your car because it's making you a target and also want to mention something uh as well okay is that there for a while here in henry county we're here in georgia and in henry county there was a, a crime ring going around for a while, and I'm going to tell you what they were doing, okay? They would have groups of people that would sort of case people's cars, watch them for a while, and, like, they would have two different crews. One crew would come in, and they would have these little reflective stickers about the size of a quarter, okay? And these crews would just walk like they are going to the movie theater or something like that and walk around, and they would just kind of quickly glass through and look and see if anything was visible, and if there was a mark on the car that maybe indicated there was something valuable like a gun sticker, or if they looked and saw a laptop case or an expensive radio or something like that, they would put this sticker on the back of the vehicle. And Henry County finally caught these guys mm -hmm. because they were like, wait a minute. They would roll around and they found these shiny stickers on people's cars. So they would mark the car with the sticker. And then the smash crew would come in in teams and they would already have the cars cased. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it wasn't like an opportunistic moment where they go through and break into into a limited set of vehicles. They already went and cased every vehicle in the parking lot, knowing that they probably have an hour plus to go through and do it because the average, you know, movies, what, an hour and a half, sometimes two. So, you know, if someone's at the movie theater, you've got a few hours. Right. So they would case it and watch when you leave. And then they, they start the timer and, OK, we got two hours for this person's going to come back. And then they would. They would only break into the vehicles that they had cased to potentially have uh, valuables in it with that shiny sticker. And wow. then the smash crew would come through and see the shiny sticker and know that's the one they need to break into. And that would buy them that extra minute or two mm -hmm. of having to look. And so from a criminal's perspective, that's kind of a, a smart way to go about it very methodically. But just know that, that criminals are pretty sneaky when it comes to this sort of thing. I wanted to share that story because that did happen here locally. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like borderline organized crime. I mean, it that, is. They're, they're getting way more organized and technology allows them to do that. You start seeing stuff like air tags. Like they'll go through and like mark vehicles with air tags and then they'll just track you around um, that way. So I think that, yes, if we're talking about you know, how do we secure these firearms? We've done a, a great deal. Uh, we've gotten into in-depth uh, explanations on what you can do to secure these firearms. Uh, you can use the vault safes. Uh, you can use um, just your regular glove box and your trunk that's locked. You can use steel braided cable and locks mm -hmm. to secure stuff. I mean, quite frankly, um, even if you had them out, which I don't condone, uh, if you had them out in your back of your car and you just had them all wrapped up with and secure with steel braided line uh, uh, through the trigger guards, wrapped up and secured to the vehicle, they can see them, but they probably wouldn't be able to get them anyways. Now your windows won't like you, but... Um, wow. Well, man, I'm reading through more of the comments and mm -hmm. it's insane, Matt, how it's like people either really agree with me fully and they're like, oh, I agree. You always got to have a long gun in your car and be ready for anything. And then there's the people that are like, what are you doing? This is a smash and grab opportunity. It's a loot, uh, a, a loot crate opportunity for yeah. people to get loot. So it is crazy how divided people are on the idea. And, and look, to clarify yet again, I just want to re reiterate, I'm not saying leave the freaking thing in your vehicle all the freaking time. I'm saying have the capabilities where you are. Right. Wherever you happen to be, you must also be capable where you are. Uh, if if the if you're going to a restaurant or whatever, or you're just going anywhere, like that you can have your backpack on you, why wouldn't you have your IFAC and your backup gun on your person? If you're in your vehicle, don't you want to have the capabilities you need in your vehicle? I'm not suggesting that if you go to a hotel, you're going to leave your your freaking long gun just sitting out with a j nice shiny bow on it saying, hey, here, smash and grab me. Right. You know, I mean, people break into cars at hotels all the time. It right. happens all the time. But I'm saying wherever you go, 
as does your your rifle. Well, what we're seeing here is a good example of paralysis by analysis. They're analyzing the outcomes so much that it's keeping them from actually acting on it. So if you said to me, oh, I don't keep a long gun in my car because I'm worried about someone breaking into my car, I would respond with, well, why would somebody break into your car? Are you giving them a reason to break into your car? No. Has your car ever been broken into before? No. Then what makes you think that you having the knowledge of putting that firearm in the vehicle hidden and secured, is there going to be some type of magical, you know, notification that people are going to go around and say, that car has a firearm in it? No. So you're, you're overanalyzing the situation because it's just like when you, uh, carry, when you conceal carry, the first couple times, you're a little bit weirded out. You're concerned that people can see your printing. You think that they can somehow magically know that you're carrying. After a while, it doesn't even become a thing. You just have it. Man. And it's the same thing with the vehicle. Like, you just have it in your vehicle. No one is going to go around you know, specifically looking for guns in your car. It's like it's like the most asinine argument I've ever seen. It is pretty crazy, man. <laughs> like there's so many comments here, and, I, and I'm continuing to go through. Like as you're talking, and I'm looking yeah, at some no, of them. I mean, it's just like and it's, it's. I would say probably 80 percent of the people commenting on this Twitter post don't think that you should leave a firearm in your vehicle. Um, and and you know what? They're right. So m maybe I didn't provide the proper context, or maybe maybe I wasn't clear in my post. I'm not suggesting just leave it laying around. Of course, yeah, I mean, you're you're you live in the middle it, of the city and you park along the secure. road, and you're just gonna leave. Yeah, it in there. no, I mean we're 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 having this podcast on the assumption. Maybe that's where we messed up on the assumption <laughs> that we're all going to exercise common sense. Right. You know, no one is saying, "Oh, we're just gonna leave." Um, a rifle in the uh, passenger seat of the car just laying there. Right. Like, does it happen? Yes. Is it a common sense thing to do? No. Yep. Daniel Daniel Sherwood said, vehicle gun safes for the win. There you go. You can have a That's, gun safe in your vehicle. Yeah. So there you go. And and they bolt in. They're, they're all, you know, you're not going to get it out without a lot of effort. Lori Allen says, grew up that way. Grandpa had a rack that sported two of them. Now, maybe <laughs> this is... A great point. Maybe this is what people are thinking. When I say keep a long gun in your vehicle, they think of like the 1980s and grandpa going to town to get some ice cream and there's freaking two deer rifles right there in the back and no one mm -hmm. messes with them because, you know, there was a time like in the 70s and 80s, you, you didn't mess with people's stuff. Like, yeah, there was there was no value in a deer rifle. Like everybody well, it's has it's not them. even that. It's just that people have more respect for each other's stuff. This you know? is true. And, and respect for each other's space. Like you, you didn't break into a man's car because that's disrespectful. You know, you don't do that to people. Obviously, um, the, the, the axiom of that has changed quite a bit. Let's see. So Mark Oliver says, I'm not so sure about that. Living in an urban area with SSH drivers... <laughs> Creepy people eyeballing opportunities to steal or worse. In my opinion, that's asking for trouble. I do see a valid need for it these days, but there's also too many risks. If you can't keep it on you, don't bring it. And then Tom's Bright Idea says, Mark, you kind of described the people who hang out at the drug front convenience store near me. I don't know. I think the bus driver would be kind of freaked out if I brought a long gun on the bus. Perhaps I should look for a takedown version. So see, again, this is all like, localized like to where you yeah. are like you know your situation must also always dictate what you do or do not do i mean if you don't think you're going to be in the kind of danger that you would need a long gun for well then by by all means don't carry a long gun just carry your sidearm and there's a lot of people in this comment section that are like hey i i just carry my sidearm and i feel protected and if that's the case mm -hmm. absolutely fine i'm just more of a capabilities guy like i if if there's a way i can be a little more capable Right. If there's some bad situation that I need to fight my way back to my vehicle and get my long gun, it's just nice knowing I have it. Well, I, I have it securely stored. I have an alarm system. I don't see a problem with it. But that's also my situation dictating my individual needs. So here's here's my mindset on it. I say I am not willing to risk my life and my family's life on the feeling that someone might steal the gun in my car i would if i in good conscience have done everything that i ha can do 
to secure that firearm and it still gets stolen, then it still gets stolen. But I would much rather have the ability to protect myself and my family when the time comes. Um, I'm not willing to say, because it's almost like you'd be putting the, the sake of the firearm being stolen above your family's safety and your safety. And that's just not a, that's not something I'm willing to do. I would risk that because I know that whenever I have my long gun in my vehicle, that I have secured it to the best of my ability. And that's all you can do. Um, firearms get stolen all the time. It, it happens, report it and move on. I think that life is full of plenty of assessed risks, mm -hmm. right? We have to take risks from time to time. I mean, think about an average police patrol car. How many p policemen's patrol cars have you walked by and saw an AR in a rack in the back? No, all the time. All the time. All the time. Or a shotgun or yep. something. Now, it's in a locked rack, and you'd have to have some brass balls as a, uh, a criminal to break into a police car. Now, it does happen. All the time. All right, you hear about police cars getting broke into and guns getting stolen all the time. Does it keep them from doing it? Is there some greater worry that, oh, this gun's going to be on the street if it gets stolen? No, they they view their need of having that gun when they need it over the importance of, well, some criminal might break in and steal it. The cops do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not suggesting that makes it okay for anyone else or that you still shouldn't try to take every you know protocol. I, I would honestly argue that civilians probably store their guns more securely than the police do. Absolutely, because they're using that. They're using the shield of being in a police office, a police vehicle, as a deterrent. Right, like, like you said, you have to have some very, very strong intestinal fortitude to walk up to a police vehicle and try and to steal any, yeah, and try yeah. to take anything out exactly. of it. Exactly. So I think that life is full of risks, and we always have to assess and weigh those risks in every decision we make, and that includes where we go, who we associate with, who we hang out with. The time that we go somewhere, the time of day, the location you go to in terms of like what part of town you're in, the the risk assessment, right? There's always risk assessments, all right? What's the danger assessment? What's the realistic assessment that you could come up with, the worst case scenario? And if that worst case scenario means that I might need a long gun with a flashlight, mm -hmm. I mean, now this is a full auto POF, but you know, I mean... Do I need to be able to see in the dark? Yeah. Does everybody carry a, a light on their on their pistol? Not not always. What if I need to identify a potential threat? Yeah. What if what if what if I've been clued in that that something's about to happen? Maybe I saw him coming. Maybe I had time to prepare. If I had time to prepare, would I rather retrieve my long gun or my pistol? I'd rather retrieve my long gun. That's right. Because that makes me more capable. What if they're wearing body armor? I mean, you have to always assess the risk. Now, is that to say that you're, you're going to wind up in some long gun shootout like from the movie Heat or something? Probably not. But here's the thing. If I don't have a long gun, then I'll never find out. If I have a pistol, I mean, yeah, I could, I could probably protect myself with a freaking pistol. Of course I can. Of course I can. I'm capable with a pistol. But I'm more capable with a rifle. I, so why not I mean, have a rifle? Yeah, I would say That's anybody is more capable with a rifle. Yeah. Um, why not be more capable? Well, you know, I'll tell you that... I'm very, very diligent about carrying my my con my concealed carry pistol like everywhere. Like I'm just that's just I'm very diligent to the point that you know my wife will be like, really? I'm like, yeah, really. Like this is we're we're just going here. Then guess what? It's coming with me. And I read a tweet from somebody. I can't. I'm not gonna say who it is, but they and you can probably figure it out by the tweet. They said uh, if you left the house today without your firearm then you just left your safety up to like prayer like, it's basically chance. like it's a chance like hopes and dreams when you look at like facebook and you know instagram and the people are like oh prayers and dreams hopes and dreams i'm like you, basically that's that's what your day is you must follow mike glover <laughs> yes <Dude. laughs> mike mike's pretty based i, I think he's yeah. he's a, he's a good guy he, he's always got good advice yeah, I, I mean, I really he, like ca he catches a lot of flack, um, but I mean, anybody that, you know, speaks their mind, anybody that, you know, and you've been a victim of this as well, Eric, yeah. so you can totally relate. You know, everybody always has an opinion and 
you know, it's just the way it is. That resonated with me. I like Mike. Um, I think, yes, everybody makes, um, you know, snafus when they when they talk because when you talk for a living, it happens. But, you know, We're I think... human. Yeah, it, it happens. I've made the mistakes. You've made the mistakes. And... It's like everybody are we're normal people. We have our own opinions. We don't owe it to anybody to to have a certain opinion on anything. But I saw that and I was just like, man, that resonates with me. I think the big takeaway is always just do your own individual risk assessments. You know, know know that where you're going does the does the danger of having a firearm stolen out of your vehicle outweigh your need to be able to protect yourself with a rifle? And if Thank the answer you. is yes, well, then don't carry a long gun in your vehicle. I, I completely understand if it's not the right tactical thing to do uh, for your particular situation. I'm just saying that uh, it should be an option that people consider, uh, and especially when done in the proper way. You know, secure storage, alarm system, layers of redundancies. Um, a safe parking spot, knowing where you're going. I mean, don't be dumb about it. But anyway, I hope this was food for thought and I hope everybody enjoyed this podcast. And I really wanted to do an episode just on this because this tweet really did uh, gain a lot of traction and a lot of people disagree with me. So I wanted to accept the fact that, yes, people disagree with me. And, you know, I wanted to lay out uh, some of my responses to some of you and to lay your concerns out on the table so all your fellow viewers uh, can know exactly what we're all thinking. And uh, that's how we get better, right? Is by sharing yep. our ideas. That and just understanding that it's it's hard work to to be as diligent and vigilant when doing this. A lot of people will say, oh, I don't carry a vehicle in, uh, I don't carry a long gun on my car because it will get stolen. And that's fine. But if you put in the work, it won't be stolen. And a that's lot right. of, it uh, comes down to, like if you're willing to put the work in to take the time to find the best parking spot mm -hmm. to make sure that you know you're in a lit area that you're in the best possible spot to be parked in it takes you can't just pull up to the grocery store and just jump out you have to analyze it you do have to think it becomes part of your life right and that that's work yep Dil diligence requires effort mm -hmm. and you know it and it may not be something that, that people want to have that additional mental strain on them to think, oh, what is my long gun? I have to manage. Because you have to manage that gun. Yeah. Like it's, it's like a controlled item in the military when, when you're issued out night of, vision. Yeah. And it's like you have to keep up that night vision. If you lose that pouch for that night vision, you're going to get hemmed up. You're going to get in a bunch of trouble, mm -hmm. right? So it's the same type of thing. Like you're keeping up with your sensitive items just like when you're in the military. That's the way I view it. It's like I'm always right. thinking, okay, I'm about to leave. All right, where's my Glock? All right, my shotgun, my mm -hmm. rifle, my kit. Blah, blah, blah. There it is. I see it. I put my, I visually put my, my eyes on it. All right, I'm good. And it's, then I can, you know. It's a process. Like when we go, like we'll go and grab something to eat and we take your truck. When we get to the restaurant, it is a process to unseat that vehicle. It's not like, oh, we jump out and we go and eat. It's like, no, there's a couple of steps we have to do in between to make sure everything is secured. And then we go. That's correct. You know. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to this podcast. I think this was a great episode, and um, big thanks to all our viewers. Uh, we try to post every week here on Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit, and thank you so much for supporting our efforts. Uh, you can find us everywhere that you find podcasts. Make sure you give us a good rating so we show up in the search results better. And thank you guys so much. Have yourself a great week, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to Life, Liberty, and Pursuit. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else podcasts are found. Be sure to leave us a five-star review. We'd really appreciate that. You can support us over on Ballistic Inc. by picking yourself up some merch. And remember, guys, dangerous freedom. Have a good one.